Hi everyone. Today we are talking about tethering. What is tethering? Why should you do it? How should you do it? We're going to walk you through everything you need to get started in tethering. I want to take you back a little while in photography um, and I want you to picture this scenario. You as well. Okay. Because you don't remember. <laughs> So basically you're on set, you have your camera, you have your A-list celebrity and you have your clients and you have everything going on and you take a picture and everyone says, how is it? And you have no idea because you have nothing telling you how your picture is. It's film and it's a camera. So then fast forward a little while, you have this amazing stuff called Polaroid that you can put this on the back of your camera and you can take a picture, but only three minutes later, you get a Polaroid. You don't have it on film, you don't have it on digital, but you have it on a Polaroid. So your clients say, how is this? And you go, oh my God, it's amazing. Look at that expression. And they go, wow, can you do that again? And you go, no, I don't think I can. And you're never gonna see that again because it's all- Wait, wait, just interject. You didn't, you never said, no, I don't think I can. In your head, you thought that. But what you said out loud was like, yeah. yeah of course okay. we can. All right, thank but, you. but the bottom line is you didn't have it on film. Mm -hmm. So then fast forward to kind of nowadays where basically your camera talks to your computer and can send a picture from your camera to the computer. And you in real time can see exactly what your picture looks like. And this is a game changer. Um, it has been and it is and it will continue to be one of the greatest advancements I've thought for a professional photographer as I, since I've been working. But what is tethering? Tethering is any time you use some sort of data cable to attach your camera to your machine so that you can get real-time data from the camera onto your computer monitor. Pretty simple. Tethering has a ton of advantages. First, if you're working with a client, they can see the photos while you're taking them and give feedback right away, that instant, no waiting a week to see what you can fix in post. Second, it lets you see the image that you shot on a larger screen, which allows you to see a lot of the smaller details that just exist in there that you often miss on your LCD. And then finally, it lets you do some photo processing as the images come in, so your clients get an idea of what these images are gonna look like when they're not as flat. Exactly. Yeah. I, think, I think kind of summing it up, it's like you are reducing the leap of faith that a client, an art director has to make from this looks great to actually it, it does look great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, of course, I was on sets before things were all super corporate. Right. So the idea for me that you'd ever like party on set, make the thing, and then wait two weeks to see what you got on contact sheets right. is yeah. just mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's what we did. It was like, did you get it? I don't know. Had a great day. Went well. Flying home tomorrow. Yeah. See you later, guys. <laughs> It's super simple. So what do you need? First of all, start with a camera. Now check your camera is capable of tethering. There's loads of resources to help with that, but basically any prosumer model camera is going to be capable. Next, you need tethering cables. Um, now you don't obviously need all of these tethering cables, but you know, as with all things, there's not one standard. So your Fuji camera might need a different cable to your computer than your Canon camera or your Leica camera and some are proprietary. So make sure you have the tether cable that works with your system. Then, of course, you need a computer. Ta-da. One big thing that can make a huge difference to the tethering experience is your workstation or your laptop. You do not want a laptop or workstation that is way behind what you're trying to do. If you want to make an adjustment, you want it instant. You want the picture that you're actually taking to be the one on the screen. You don't want to be 40 images behind. Today for tethering, we're going to use my Dell Precision 5750. It's a beast. I can have Photoshop, Capture One, Lightroom, 
all open at the same time, switch back and forth without compromising my speed on my tethering. Really, really important. So this is a good time to tell you that this episode is actually brought to you by Dell. We're super, super thrilled to have them on board as a sponsor. And if you guys are in the market for a new workstation, desktop, laptop, I highly recommend looking at the precision range because it's just made my life simpler. And finally, you need some sort of capture software. There's a few out there. Some are proprietary to the camera you own. And many of them come with some kind of software. Canon has its own software, I believe. Fuji has its own software. Um, if you're using a Hasselblad, then you have to totally rely on their own software because the Hasselblad is not compatible with anything else. Um, so do some research, find out what softwares you can use, and then try them all out on trials or however you want to do it and find out which ones work best for you and your setup. Um, I'm a big Lightroom user. I have a Lightroom catalog of about half a million photos. Um, it's really, really easy for me just to shoot tethered into Lightroom. The photos are in my catalog and it keeps me in the Adobe family. However, we're gonna use Capture One today because in all honesty, Capture One is actually better for tethering. It is much, much faster to bring the pictures in. It gives me much better control of the color on the pictures and it's just better for today's workflow. So Capture One today. So we have our tethering cable plugged in, one side to our laptop, one side to the camera. We've got Capture One open and we're ready to take some photos. For fun today, we're gonna to do something way outside my wheelhouse and we're gonna do a splash photo. Now, Alex is saying that it's in his wheelhouse. I don't think it's in his wheelhouse, so let's see how well he does. Tethering today is really gonna help us see our images come in in real time, make adjustments, and be able to present very quickly what we're seeing to a client if he was standing there. So uh, let's go. Okay guys, so I'm gonna open a new uh, session here. Um, it's gonna ask me for a name. I'm gonna call it Can Alex Pull This Off? Yeah, of course you would. Um, it's saving in the right place. I'm gonna press OK and we are pretty much ready to roll here. What I'm loving about today is that with Capture One, I can actually control my camera. So I can I have my settings, my f-stop, my aperture, um, ISO, and more importantly, just by doing control and K, I can take a photo. So, you know, I don't have to move around. It's a good part. Where are we at, Alexis? Well. Oh, you're taking photos well, now. Well, I just wanted to make sure the strobe was gonna pop. Oh. Well, I don't know, so I think we're pretty set. Yeah, it looks I, good here. I don't know for sure. Ah. I uh, don't know for sure whether or not I have it lined up just right. So I suppose, you know, we'll just give it a shot and see if, uh, see if it, it works. So what I'm gonna do, guys, my camera over there is set to continuous. And just as a quick example, if I press Control K, keep my finger on it, I can shoot as fast as my camera can shoot. So uh, I'm ready to start shooting when Alex gives me the okay. What's the likelihood that I get blue dye on my nice white sweatshirt today? I would be disappointed if you don't. Yeah, I figured that was it. So what's in that, Alex? Uh, you know, just food coloring. Hmm. It's raspberry flavored. Nice. All right. We ready to roll? Yeah, you tell me when. I am shooting. All right, let's see if we got one in the beginning. So um, our first few pictures are in and I can report that I was completely underestimated Alex and it worked and it looks really, really pretty. Um, quick disclaimer, if we were still live guys, um, we would be spending the next six hours 
getting the perfect splash here. That's not what we're about today. We're about showing the software. So a um, couple of things that I want to show you straight off, which I think are really cool. Um, a loop tool. So if I choose my loop tool, I can set my loop um, and I can actually get a real good look at what's happening, what's sharp, what's in focus, which is really, really nice um, immediately. Um, then if I you know, wanted to, uh, to go through my images, it's very, very quick to spin through them. It's kind of fun doing this on this shoot because it looks like a little stop motion uh, video. So that's, that's really, really cool. Um, one other thing I'm gonna show you is how to gray balance really quickly. So we didn't shoot a gray card, but if we go over here a little bit um, and I choose my little uh, gray balance droplet, and then if I find an area that kind of works, so, you know, mid neutral area, we have a gray balance. So that's pretty much uh, exactly where I'd start. I'd get everything to this point, the exposure looks great. And then I think we would take another set of images and Alex is gonna really show you some more details on how this software really shines. So one of the great things about Capture One is that it is incredibly customizable. I'm not gonna go into all the features right now because really it is just a lot and it's more than any one person would need for one project. So maybe we can like dive into that in another video if anyone's interested. But for now, I do wanna get you started on what I think are some of the most useful tools and what I would set up for my basic workflow. So let's jump into it. So let's start by looking through a couple of the images that we got. The funny thing about these flash images is that even though we took a whole bunch of pictures, it's only the first couple pictures from each cycle that are gonna give us anything. So let's just choose one real quick. That one's pretty cool. I like this one. So let's start with this one. So first things first, we're gonna look at what my workspace looks like. When you open up Capture One, they have already given you a ton of tools right here, but I like to reset mine to be much more simpler. The first thing I want is my ability to control my camera, where I can change my shutter speed and all those type things. I can physically sit here and take a picture. The next thing we're gonna do is come over here to our exposure adjustments tool. So I've really simplified this. I have a white balance corrector, I have a small exposure corrector, high dynamic range, um, I have a clarity, and then I want to remove a bunch of these actually, because I don't need a dehaze, I don't need a color editor right here. I have a color tool set up. I don't need color balance. I don't need black white. I will like a vignette. And then I'm gonna add one tool. And you see you have this huge drop down of literally dozens of tool that you can put on each page. This is something that Lightroom will never give you the ability to do because it's a little bit more user friendly, a little bit less professional. And I am going to add a curve to it because I want to literally drop a curve right here as I work. I'm gonna move this down to where I want it under my high dynamic range. So let's adjust the image. Okay, so we're at an image that we like. First step. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna check our white balance. Choose a, a gray spot. Sample, change. My exposure is pretty good. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and add about nine points of exposure just so I can see my edges a little bit better. I'm gonna come down to my highlights and I'm gonna bring them down a few points. Again, I'm really trying to make sure the edge of this glass is really visible. If it fades into the background, it's junk. And that's something that this software allows me to do. It allows me to just fix it, make it crisp that much faster. I'm gonna bring my shadows deeper, which is normally what, uh, normally the opposite of what Mark likes to do. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna put a little S in my curve. It's gonna add more saturation. It's gonna pop the color a little bit more. It's gonna pop those shadows. And then I'm gonna come down to the clarity and structure slider. 
Now, everybody knows about Clarity and Lightroom, and everybody knows that there was a period around 2010 where the go-to thing to do was just crank the Clarity, and then it became really passe really fast. The cool thing is, Capture gives you a more finite system where you can either choose the substructure or to actually pump the contrast, which is what Clarity basically does. I'm not gonna mess with the Clarity because I don't want it to look fake, but I am gonna push my structure way up. And if I go to my loop tool, you're gonna be able to see a little bit more juicy detail in those colors. All right, and so the next thing I'm gonna do, even though when it's time to process this image, I'm gonna use this as a starting point. I'm gonna sample this guy off the background. I'm gonna rebuild my glass, and I'm gonna put it in a completely new place. But for now, just so that the people on set get a little bit more excited about it, I'm gonna add a little vignette, maybe drive a little bit more focus to the center. And that's that. Now we got a point, just so that when we start shooting again in one second, which we're about to do, I'm gonna sample this preset by clicking this up arrow, boom. Scroll down to my very last photo. Apply the adjustments I just did. And now in a second, Mark's gonna slide in and we're gonna shoot some more. So we'll see you in one sec. Yeah, so get up there and get ready and I'm gonna do a test shot real quick from here. So one of the great things about using Capture One for still lives is that when your stylist or your, you set it up, you can then sit back from your computer and control K, shoot from your monitor. So Mark, I'm ready when you're ready. So you tell me and I'm gonna any, start firing. Any tips or hints? <laughs> uh, aim for the funnel. <laughs> That's what she said. All right, uh, I am just about to start pouring. All right, here we go. Hey, not bad. And one thing I want to point out is these images are coming in so fast, and that's thanks to the NVIDIA RTX graphics cards that are available in the Dell Precision workstations. So right off though, we see the advantages of using Capture One because this image just came in and it instantly looks awesome. It has all the vibrance, it has all the contrast, we can see all the lines in the glass. Did we miss our aim and miss the glass a little bit? Yeah, we did, but that doesn't matter. What's important is that we had all these adjustments come in just like that. And if I had an art director over my shoulder who watched us slowly go through making the first image and then they approved it, then they're watching these images come in, they're happy, they're being positive, and normally everyone on the set's happy as a result. Tethering is an incredible resource. When shooting fashion, we always tether. And normally we use multiple monitors, so the client, the stylist, the photo assistants can all preview. And to be honest, normally we show the clients slightly different things that are coming to our capture. Um, so I highly recommend incorporating tethering into your photography workflow. It's so easy and it's just really ups your game. Totally. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching everyone. Please leave any questions you have about tethering in the comments and Alex will certainly answer them for you. Also, any comments about anything that you would like to see us make a video about would be greatly appreciated because we want to make videos that you guys want to watch. So we'll see you next time.